All right. Uh, this was one of the devices that Mike sent in this big uh, care package. Uh, it's a 10-volt reference. I mean, a 10 volts, 10 megahertz reference uh, from 1992, 27th week of 1992. Um, and uh, this is out of a IFR uh, radio monitor, probably. Um, so out of some IFR, I'm not sure which one. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it's got some connector to it, and then uh, the output of the 10 megahertz comes out this connector. So uh, I just thought it'd be interesting to hook it up, play with it. Um, I went ahead and I reverse engineered the um, circuit. So let's take a look at that. All right, hope you can read this. Uh, so here's the connector, here's the output. So um, the VCC comes in, it gets filtered with a couple caps. It's a diode protected for the correct voltage. It goes into the op amp that's on the circuit. All right, so the, the op amp is powered from the raw voltage through a diode. All right, the, uh, the part itself, the oscillator itself, is powered directly from the uh, VCC that, that it's given. Now, uh, internal to this oscillator, uh, there's a voltage reference in here as well. So the raw voltage just operates other things, but this is all controlled inside so the, um, it can use just raw voltage. Um, and then there's the circuit here. Uh, the output of the oscillator gets filtered, or it didn't get filtered, it gets divided down. So I, I, uh, it's um, a five volt output square wave, five volts, and then it gets divided down to a smaller voltage that's needed for the IFR. So um, I'm actually, uh, I put a, a, a test, test point right here uh, so I can monitor the, uh, the output directly, the five volts directly. Uh, the output of the op amp is uh, low pass filtered. This is the control voltage, uh, call it VC. And uh, that control voltage is operated with the op amp. What does the op amp do? Well, the op amp, if you ignore all this other stuff, the op amp is a, uh, has a 10K, 10K, so it has a gain of one. Um, and then uh, the other side is a offset, offset voltage. Well, how much offset voltage do you put in? You put in uh, offset voltage of the VCC divided down. So there's a division here, and then that sets up some offset voltage that moves everything up off the of ground. So the thing can operate single, single supply. And then like say it's gain of one, so basically it's going to be somewhere around one half of the VCC coming in and then, uh, or maybe about one third of the VCC coming in. So if you have 12 volts coming in, you're going to be around five volts or something like that um, as the offset. Now, what do these two diodes do? Uh, they're kind of funny. They're, they're actually a package, right? You can get a, a three-legged three package that actually has two uh, two diodes in it, right? And if I can draw it here, so you know, so, so, something like that. So, 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 so that's what this is. It's just a single. It's actually a SOT23 package. It's a tiny little package. Uh, it's that little guy. There. There's actually two of them. One of them's up here. One of them's down here. Uh, this one is wired so that your op amp. If I redraw it, if you have if you have a op amp with some inputs. Uh, those two diodes get put in here like, like, like this. So it just keeps the op amp from going way off base. It keeps these closer to one another, right? Um, so that's what, the, uh, that's what the diodes here are doing. So it's a real simple circuit. We should be able to hook this thing up and then uh, we should get some type of uh, 10 megahertz out of it. And then if we put in a different voltage, we can uh, modify this control voltage and then watch the uh, watch the frequency change. Okay, let's do that. So uh, before we do that, I want to do one other thing, which is I have uh, some questions about rubidium standards and why don't I use uh, uh, G GPS and things like that. So let, let's go take a look at that kind of thing first. All right, I just uh, usually just use my rubidium standard um, as my 10 megahertz source. 
Um, but uh, quite a while, uh, quite a while ago is now. I, I, I showed this on my channel, but quite a while ago, a gracious viewer donated this to the channel, which is the uh, Leo. What's the guy's name? Leo Budnard uh, made a little GPS uh, 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 reference clock, uh, GPS reference clock. So um, I decided to pull that out and um, compare it with my rubidium. And so uh, you can see I'm getting, for those who always say, oh, you've got to have the, anyway, um, I have a whole bunch of satellites being received and I'm getting a really good clock. It's been on for a while now, um, about an hour. And uh, this is the uh, XY diagram of, uh, of the uh, mini GPS versus the, um, Rubidium. So the rubidium's on channel two and uh, the Leo thing is on channel one. You can see that they agree, <laughs> agree pretty well. Uh, they will drift off a little bit, but I mean, that's super, super, super slow. Um, the, uh, the reason we're not getting a nice circle that, that rotates in space is because we're looking at square waves and, uh, yeah, there we go. We can take a look at what they look like. Uh, let's go here to time mode. Let's go back to normal mode. And uh, let's turn them both on. And there we go. So the rubidium is putting out a, uh, a sine wave, but the, uh, the Leo clock puts out a square wave. So, uh, and uh, you can watch the drift between the two. Um, it's, it's probably said that the, uh, the GPS reference one is more accurate. Um, but for ease of use, I can just turn on my rubidium and it is pretty darn close. I don't know if I can tweak the rubidium or not, or whether I really want to, but, uh, they agree pretty well. And if I go back to XY mode, it's more fun and it's more classic, more classic to take a look at the, uh, at the two drift. Now see, it's going a little bit faster now. I don't think the rubidium drifted off, but the GPS clock, maybe it's, you know, it's keeping a running average and maybe it drifts off and slows down and drifts off and slows down. I, I really don't, I really don't know the statistics between the two of them. If anybody knows, um, like I said, I don't think my rubidium is going to drift faster or slower. I think it, uh, if anything, it's going to be the, uh, the uh, GPS clock. Cause the way it's done is the, it, it, it the, there's a microprocessor in uh, this little guy and it keeps getting updated and stuff like that. So if you lose GPS signal, it's still, it still has a clock in it that runs for a while. So it has, it has a short term drift and then it updates itself with the, with the, uh, with the satellites. Uh, but uh, yeah, it does it with a phase lock loop, right? Um, all right. So uh, with that out of the way, and just for fun, um, you may have noticed that the uh, Keysight has released new firmware where we have XY mode now uh, on the new HD three scopes. So XY mode works good. I can uh, drop this down to make a make it a nice big picture. There we go. Yeah, see they agree pretty darn well. <laughs> I would say my GPS is just fine. Just, just fine. All right, um, so let's go on with the uh, with the project we've been working on. All right, I have our device hooked up. I've got 12 volts going into VCC. I've got some control voltage going into the other input. Um, I'm monitoring it with a scope. I have that on channel one. And I have the rubidium standard on channel two. And you can see that they are not moving very much, okay? Now, if I reach over, let's see, I need to walk around the camera. All right, so if I reach over and I grab the control voltage, it's set to 5.42 volts right now. And if I change it to 
5.41 volts, you can see that it's uh, that it's uh, it's changing. Let's go to uh, some fast thing. Let's see here. This is 5.36 volts. So you can see that somewhere around five and a half volts, this thing is. Uh, we can tune this thing. Again, that's 5.42 volts, and we're basically uh, in phase with the uh, rubidium standard. So yeah, so we can control this thing to go fast, uh, to go the other way, and uh, yeah. So let's go see. This is uh, six volts, and this is uh, five volts, and so yeah. So somewhere in the middle. So it's got a good tuning range, not too not too sensitive. So. Uh, Okay, so I take it back. It's a little bit sensitive. A little bit sensitive. Anyway, 4.26, 4. Uh, 4.2. Yep, there we go. 4.2. 5.42 is the right uh, right voltage for this particular device. Okay, well that was just having a little bit of fun with uh, one of the one of the parts in, in Mike's care package here. Uh, uh, piezo crystal company uh, 10 megahertz serial number 601 all right